good morning on this very, very beautiful Sunday before Thanksgiving. It's uh, a little weird in here this morning. Um, Brett and Jim and I are here to try to lead worship, and it's I've never preached to a empty pew before, but here we go. We're just going to enjoy the day. Um, the announcements are uh, as follows. Due to Fillmore County being in the red, we have suspended worship this week. We're going to do this on a weekly basis. You should receive an email a, um, or a phone call, or you can check us out on Facebook every Friday for uh, what will happen on the, that coming Sunday. You may also go to Public Health Solutions website and uh, that will let you know whether Fillmore County is in the red. If we are, then all activities within the church are suspended and as with anything, we're just taking this day by day, sometimes moment by moment, and everything is subject to change. Um, Senior High UMYF will not be meeting the rest of the year and we'll let you know what's going to transpire in 2021. Um, and we do ask you, please, 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 if you enter the church building, whether it's during the week to bring something to the church office or ask a question, please have a mask on and, and uh, keep the six feet distance. <clears throat> uh, blessing boxes may be uh, dropped off any time now. We have received right at 20 and lots of wonderful food. We uh, have uh, delivered 70 pounds of hamburger and a lot of and some of the food to um, Blue Valley. They asked for hamburger versus turkey. So with the cash donations that we received, that's what we did last week. Heather has been very diligent in putting things out in the, our little food pantry here, and she fills it every morning. She goes out and, and uh, takes a couple of bags of food, and we are so thankful that we have that. Thank you, and um, the hands that have brought it and, the, and those who are receiving it. If you have any other questions, please call the church office. We're more than happy to help you in any way we can. And with those right at 20 blessing boxes and all the, the food that we have, I thought this morning we'd, we'd start with just a blessing box prayer. So let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you are so very generous. You have lavishly provided for us the fruits of the earth. As you have always promised your faithful people, you fill us with good things. So today, Lord, we thank you for all the blessing boxes, the food they contain, and the hearts that filled them. Bless us as we share this food. Bless all those who receive it, knowing that we will share with you in the eternal celebration one day. In Jesus' name, we offer it all to you. Amen. And now, if you would join with me in the call to worship as it comes up on the screen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Thank you, God, for so many wondrous gifts, for our homes and families, for our church and friendship, for food and fellowship. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, we say rejoice. Thank you, God, for new life in Jesus Christ, for love, for belonging, and for this time of thanks and praise. We all now rejoice and feast in the gifts and grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now the hymn we gather together.
And now let us pray. Bounteous God, you have lavished your finest gifts on each one of us. We thank you for the many ways in which you have blessed our lives with love, hope, friends, our church, and so many other things that we cherish. Help us be a blessing for others that they may come to know you and rejoice in your love. Give us hearts of courage and confidence to step out into the world in service, bringing hope where there is doubt, peace where there is strife, love where there is discord. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture for this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Therefore, Jesus says, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows what you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Would you play, please pray with me? Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be full of thanksgiving and gratefulness to you, our great Lord, for you are our rock and our provider. Amen. Well, the there were these two fellas walking through a field, and all of a sudden, they happened to see a really mean bull. And you know, our, of course, our first response is to run as fast as you can for the fence, right? Well, they did. But the bull saw them as well, and off he went in hot pursuit. And boy, he was getting closer by the moment. So scared to death, one of the men hollered at the other, Say a prayer, John, we're in for it. And John replied, I've never said a public prayer in my life. I wouldn't know what to say. But your daddy was a preacher. Surely he taught you some kind of a prayer. John, you got to pray. The bull's right behind us. Okay, John said, well, this is the only prayer I remember my dad saying, Oh, Lord, for what we are about to receive, make us truly thankful. Well, on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, we typically take a few moments to give thanks but not only give thanks, we need to truly feel thankful in our hearts. And yet, if we're completely honest, how thankful do we really feel right now in this crazy world? Are we worried? Do we kind of feel like the bulls are catching up with us? Is there anxiety and concern and loneliness and distress and sadness and some disappointment and pain or, or just plain boredom creeping into our lives? There was a pastor who told about how he sat down one Thanksgiving season to write notes to his family and, and his friends. And, and you know how that goes. You write this generic sort of letter and you copy it over and over again. And you add something just a little bit different at the beginning or end of each letter. But most notes say the same thing. You say, happy Thanksgiving, be grateful to God, hope you have a grand time with family. And you, you know, little bits like that. Well, then the pastor came to Jane. 
and he thought about Jane's son. He was driving a car this past week and was in a tragic accident. His girlfriend was killed and he was still in a coma. Sometimes it's hard to give thanks. And then he sent Chris Thanksgiving greetings to his friend Bob as he wrote the words, Remember to give thanks. He thought about how this would probably be Bob's last Thanksgiving as his cancer had taken its toll. It's hard to give thanks. He sent email greetings to his cousin Joe, whose mother can no longer remember her son. It's hard at times to give thanks. You know, the past eight months have taken a toll on our lives as well. Businesses have closed, jobs have been lost, people have died, and life is so very different. You turn on the TV or you open the newspaper and what do you see? You see all kinds of chaos and there's fighting and there's bickering and there's slandering and there's COVID statistics and there's fires and there's floods. And it's just hard sometimes to give thanks. And then we hear Jesus say in Matthew 6, don't worry about your life. Do you ever wonder, are they just words? Well, we're thinking about Thanksgiving this day and being thankful. So how's your month of Thanksgiving shaping up? Is your Thanksgiving life full of joy and gratitude? Or is it full of anxiety and disappointment and worry? You know, sometimes it's just hard to hear Jesus' words and not worry about our lives, the lives of those we dearly love, the lives of our friends or our church, our community, our country, God's world. Isn't it? I mean, isn't it really hard? Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote in Philippians, he said, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. You know, Paul was a man who was always giving thanks to God. In 1 Thessalonians, he wrote, Be thankful in all circumstances. And in 1 Timothy, Paul said, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Paul urges us to be in prayer always especially those prayers of thanksgiving for everyone, even the ones who may not look like us, the ones who may not think like us, or the ones who agree with us. Now, before we think it was easy for Jesus or Paul or any of the others, for that matter, because they're spiritual giants, we need to think again. Paul was pretty upfront about all that went on in his life, if you read 1 Corinthians, we find that it wasn't that easy for Paul. He said, I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea, and I have traveled so many long journeys, and I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from all the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. And then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. I mean, this was the same man who said, give thanks always. And yet we still know that it's hard to give thanks when someone close to us dies. It's hard to be thankful when our health is threatened or when we lose a job or someone we love loses theirs. It's hard to be thankful when the COVID dial hits red and life changes. It's really hard to have a thankful heart when life comes crashing down around us in whatever form it takes. And yet, Paul wrote, be thankful in all circumstances. 
You know, Paul was definitely no stranger to hard times, and he knew he should give thanks to God even in the most difficult of all situations. Now, I can't speak for you, but I can say for myself, it's hard to be thankful all the time. How about you? Well, Reverend Alexander White always prayed uplifting prayers, and he seemed to always find something to be grateful for. And one Sunday morning, things were just not going good, and the weather was pretty awful. And and so one church member thought to himself, well, certainly the preacher won't think of anything to thank the Lord for on this wretched day. And much to the church member's great surprise, Reverend White began his prayer by saying, We thank thee, O God, that it's not always like this. So you see, being thankful begins with our attitude. We have to feel in our hearts that there's something to be grateful for. It's so much more than just looking on the bright side. We have to feel that joy inside. Reverend Tony Evans said this, God says to give thanks in everything. That doesn't mean you need to give thanks for everything. You don't need to give thanks for that bad day or for that bad relationship or being passed over at work, financial hardship. Whatever it is, you are not to give thanks for the difficulties, but rather in the difficulties. Reverend Evans continues, that is a very important distinction and one I think we often miss. Giving thanks in everything shows a heart of faith that God is bigger than the difficulties and that he can use them if you approach him with the right heart and spirit for your good and his glory. I think that's something that we need to remember, to give thanks in the difficulties, that our God truly is bigger than anything that's happening around us. A friend of ours, a young woman in her mid-30s, was diagnosed a few years ago with lung cancer, and Tara has never, ever smoked a cigarette a day in her life. Two years ago, she posted this, and this is what she said. November 7th. Today marks four years since I was diagnosed with cancer. I look back over the last four years of things being difficult and stressful and me not feeling great and also dealing with me being diagnosed with lupus, and I can't help but be grateful for all the lessons that I have learned through this journey. Hearing that you have lung cancer at 35 years old will give you a whole new perspective on life and what is truly important. It makes you slow down and embrace the beauty of the ordinary days, the beauty of every day, even when they are less than perfect. I don't think I could be where I am mentally if it hadn't been for this day four years ago. That doesn't mean that there aren't days that I struggle, days that I'm frustrated, days that I'm fearful, but through it all, on those days, I shift my focus to what all I am living for what all I feared I would lose. I draw my kids and my family close, and I just enjoy being in the moment with them. Tonight, we did the same thing we have done for the last four years. We had a great meal of comfort food and all piled into the living room for a family night, watching a movie and drinking hot chocolate. When everything was falling apart in my world, they were exactly what I needed to center me. And tonight, when everything was calm and peaceful, They are still exactly what I needed. You never know what life is going to throw at you from day to day, but life is certainly a lot easier when you go into it with a grateful heart and appreciation for the beauty in the simple things. I thank Tara for her words. Because you see, we have to look beyond our short view to God's long view, to be thankful in all things, even when it's hard to do so. We have to look beyond wearing masks and doing social distancing and changing Thanksgiving plans. Thankfulness to God isn't simply a a self-centered appreciation for the things God does for us, for the things God gives us. Thankfulness to God is a God-centered, heartfelt appreciation for the gift of God's faithfulness in our lives. This has been a crazy year, to say the least. 
It's been a hard year. And if we only focus on the short view, it's pretty easy to become downhearted and, and to forget to be thankful for God's faithfulness in our lives. So instead, I pray that we can focus on and remember God's long view of life, God's promises that are faithful in the ups and downs of life, to remember that there have been many more good years, good days, good moments than bad, and that all we are and all we have is a gift from God. You see, our inability to control what is happening right now is a reminder that God is the one who is God and we're not. So this Sunday before Thanksgiving, remember the God who remembers you. Remember the God who has every hair on your head numbered. Remember the God who clothes each one of us more beautifully than the lilies of the field. Remember that all we have and all we are comes from God who never forgets and who never lets us down. We may have had some very tough times this past year, and yet this can be a thanksgiving to remind us to remember the God who remembers us, to remember that we can often get caught up in a, the short view and come to think that the daily bread that we pray for is because of our doing, that we get what we work for. Thanksgiving is a reminder, a celebration of the fact that all we have is from God and that our great God's long view is so much more trustworthy than any of our short views. And so here we are, wherever we are, to give thanks. Remember to be thankful to the one who created us, the one who gives us life. Remember the one who died so we may live, the one who loves us and who comes to live among us, bringing with him the promises of God that cannot and will not fail. You see, I think it's always good to look beyond ourselves to others. So I thank you for the blessing boxes. And, so, and I ask you now, between now and Thanksgiving, write a note of Thanksgiving to someone, someone from your past maybe, or someone in your present, someone whom you may respect or someone you may have had difference of opinions with. Write from a joy-filled, grateful heart to extend the long view of our God. So this year be a thanksgiving blessing. And remember, in the coming year, life will have its share of ups and downs. But no matter what happens, God will be with us. God will remain faithful. So today, what if we were like Charlie Brown and Snoopy and just be grateful for everything and say with joy, thanks be to God, give thanks with a grateful heart. Amen. So this week, we ask for you to continue to pray for Clarence Nunn. We ask that you pray for Larry and Emily Westerber and their family and the loss of their son, Todd. We ask that you pray for the Mum family, as well as has also entered into his eternal life. We ask that you pray for the, our health care workers, our teachers, and all who are fighting COVID. So let us go to our great God in prayer. On this day, O oh God, we pause to give thanks to you wherever we are. For some of us, words of thanksgiving will flow easily from our lips. For others, trying to name our blessings may prove rather difficult and sometimes an impossible task. Lord, we realize Thanksgiving this year may be very different from previous years. Tables may not have as many around them in body, and yet we can all be together in spirit, maybe seeing one another through Zoom or FaceTime. And honestly, Lord, there is this underlying sense of worry crowding out our sense of blessing. So whatever our reality, Lord, we ask that you help us focus not so much on material things, whether we have a great abundance or whether there's scarcity or whether life is the way we want it right now, but help us focus on how we are living our lives. How are we proclaiming your love and your plan? Lord, help us recognize all the ways you are present in our lives this year. Help us gather the strength we need for today 
and hope for all our tomorrows. Encourage us to seek that special time with Jesus, your great gift to us, through whom you offer living water and bread of life. And you offer so much more than we can ask or imagine. Help us to extend our prayers of thanksgiving to you into tomorrow and the next day and the next with joyful spirits. And may we always remember that we truly are loved and blessed and have so very much to be thankful for. You are our God who is worthy to be praised, and you have given us the greatest gift of life in Jesus Christ. And now we can pray the way Jesus taught us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now our hymn of going forth is sent forth by God's blessing. Well, we might have messed up that last hymn, but we all know that our God is a great and wonderful God. And now, as we go forth, remember the Lord our God, who has given us many good gifts. Go with the grace of God to share God's many gifts with all the world. Take care to remember God has given us these gifts. Go with thankful hearts. Go in joyous thanksgiving, living the good news of Jesus Christ every day and everywhere. Amen. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. <laughs>